When Dean Windass fired Hull City to the Premier League in the 2008 Championship Playoff Final, the Tigers were going to embark on their first ever Premier League campaign. Phil Brown hastily put together a squad on a small budget to try and compete, with Hull adding players like Daniel Kuzan, George Boateng, Kevin Kilban and Giovanni, amongst a plethora of new signings. Most pundits believed Hull would be relegated in their first season, and with good reason due to their poor squad and inexperienced manager. But for whatever reason, the Tigers were able to take the Premier League by storm. Winning their first game 2-1 against Fulham, Hull would draw their second match 1-1 at Ewood Park against Blackburn. A 5-0 defeat at home to Wigan showed that Brown's side were maybe not quite equipped for the Premier League, but Hull responded by ripping off five wins from their next six matches. Victories against Newcastle, Arsenal and Tottenham all away from home were astounding, while Hull also defeated West Ham and West Brom 1-0 and 3-0 respectively. Those results lifted Hull to second place in the league, a truly miraculous start of the season had fans believing that the Tigers would do more than just make the numbers up in the top flight. Three straight defeats followed against Chelsea, Man United and Bolton, but Hull were able to go five games unbeaten heading into the Christmas period and they even drew at Anfield against title-chasing Liverpool. A dodgy Christmas period followed as Hull fell to a 4-1 home defeat against Sunderland before losing 5-1 at Man City. The Etihad was the site of Phil Brown's famous half-time team talk on the pitch where he publicly dressed down his players who were 4-0 down at half-time. This is often seen as the beginning of the end, but the reality was that the rot had set in earlier, with Hull winning just one of their previous nine Premier League games. Four straight defeats followed that Man City game and left Hull truly mired in the relegation battle and on a slippery slope. Draws against West Brom and Chelsea helped stop the downward momentum before the Tigers won 1-0 away at Fulham thanks to a last gasp Manucho goal. That result was Hull's first win in 11 games and put them on 32 points with 10 games remaining. Despite that promising position, Hull would continue to falter and picked up just three more draws in their final 10 games of the season. A defeat against fellow strugglers Sunderland and Middlesbrough left the Tigers perilously close to the drop zone. A draw at Bolton in the second last game of the season gave the Tigers a reprieve as they sat just one point above the relegation zone heading into the final day. Two of Sunderland, Hull, Newcastle and Middlesbrough were to be relegated. Fortunately for Brown's side, all of the teams at the bottom lost their final day clash, which meant that Hull survived by just one point. The Tigers endured a wretched run of form to end the season, picking up just nine points from their final 22 games of the campaign. Hull attempted to improve their squad the following summer, but the additions fell flat as the team continued to battle relegation. Phil Brown did manage to keep Hull in survival contention in the season though, with wins over Bolton, Wigan, Stoke and Everton at home helping keep them afloat. Hull were to dismiss Phil Brown after they lost to Arsenal in mid-March and replaced him with Ian Dowie who could do little to stop the rot. The Tigers won just one of their final 13 games and finished in 19th place, 5 points adrift of safety with a league worst minus 41 goal difference. While Hull's first foray into the Premier League ended with relegation after two seasons, it's hard to argue against the fact that they added a great deal of entertainment value to the competition. The Tigers have of course been back to the top table since on a few occasions, but have never lasted more than a couple of seasons.